is related to one of the two candidates facing off in Guinea's presidential election. But for security reasons, Aminato Diallo prefers to hide her face. Along with thousands of other Guineans, Diallo joined a peaceful protest against the military government on September 28, 2009, at Conakry's football stadium. It ended with a violent army crackdown. More than 150 people died, thousands were injured and dozens of women raped. Diallo says she was hit violently over the head. One year on, she's calling on the International Criminal Court to bring those responsible to justice. Guinea can't do it. I hope the international institutions look into the case so that there can be justice and put Guinea out of its misery. What kind of international institution? The ICC, a tribunal, that's what we hope for, so the dead can rest in peace. We met some of the massacre survivors back in February. They were being cared for discreetly in a Conakry hospital. This woman was raped and has since been suffering from psychological trauma. Her doctor says her condition hasn't changed since we last visited. This 18-year-old man was beaten so badly his foot had to be amputated. He's still in hospital. There have been complications and he now has to lose more of his leg. As for this 24-year-old student, she told us that she endured violence for days after the stadium tragedy in a villa alongside Guinean soldiers. It was on the 28th of September when we arrived in the villa. They drugged all the girls before doing what they wanted with us, so I refused to drink the coffee. One of the soldiers cut me and forced me to drink the coffee anyway. I didn't have a choice, so I drank it. Following her statement, France has granted her political refugee status. But she prefers not to speak to the media to protect family members back in Guinea. This civil rights activist is now in Paris after being wounded at the stadium. He still suffers with the injuries he sustained that day. He also prefers to remain anonymous for fear of reprisals in Conakry. We're here and all these killers who are always present. We, the victims, don't feel safe. That's a situation we have to live with, and none of these killers has anything to worry about. Despite efforts to restore democracy in Guinea, September the 28th will remain a somber date. Most of the victims of that day continue to live in pain and constant fear.